Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of hearing myself on the TV because the FCAT guy who's coughing back there is in complete control, like Al Haig, 82. Okay, that said, regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we can call it to order at 6.35, uh, it's a regular meeting in a regular time. Tonight we're going to talk primarily about uh, states of emergency information exchanges uh, from our office to the state agencies to the SEPT people. We may get to a budget item at the end. I'm not entirely sure. A couple of interesting points uh, right out of the starting gate are about uh, the changes that occurred uh, through uh, Saturday and Sunday at the state level. Uh, you, you will see now that the library director is huddled down here wondering, am I going to have a building that's going to be open? Well, maybe not for like at least three weeks or so, and maybe a little bit longer. Uh, there was uh, taped, taped signs at all of our doors and public buildings saying, listen, if you, exempt, if you show any kind of a symptom, stay out of the building. We want to conduct business, but we have to keep everybody safe. Um, the governor has just been layering on elements of declarations of emergency that have been uh, both really wide-reaching from the public, but also from your, your local government's perspective. The ability uh, to do things like delay town meeting, you know, to delay elections, to go on a month-by-month -month budget process in the event this continues on into June. So uh, the steps being taken right now are areas that we'll discuss over the next couple of weeks including actually how we're going to meet we may not end up meeting here anymore but we'll see how that ends up playing out it's also important to bear in mind that you know we need to be fact-based there's currently no uh cases of uh the corona this particular uh, breed of coronavirus in franklin county and in hampshire county at least not as of at six o'clock tonight so that said, let's just be smart about how we stay uh, safe. There's plenty of good information on uh, the state website, the mass.gov, the CDC's website, and a great tracker that, that Johns Hopkins did. It's just you know really loaded with information. It's quite, quite interesting. And uh, I'll leave the next couple of comments to uh, Dave and Tom if they want to add anything. And should he be miked differently, FCAT? We'll, we'll know in a minute, right? I think he should move by the table. First. There you go. He's, he's, he's keeping a distance. So, so, so basically, um, one of the things that we're practicing is called social distancing. And we're trying to maintain at least a six-foot radius from between us. Um, that, that's the recommendations that, that we have received. Now, it may seem silly, um, but... If um, if you watch local polit or not local but national politicians, <laughs> uh, glad you know backslapping one another and and it's probably not not the what we want to be presenting, and and we we do want to take it serious and and how and how and how, what does what does that mean? It means that we the board of oversight of the, the the South County uh, Senior Center had an emergency emergency meeting last. Thursday evening, and we we close the the senior center to um, to the people that use it, um, and that that was not an easy decision, but it's our most one of our most if if not the most vulnerable groups in our community, and the board of oversight um, could not take action. I, I will say that you you hear you may hear uh, things that be going that are going on. You will question that yourself, but I can tell you, without 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 any type of doubt in my mind, that right now you may be asking that we're or saying that it's what we're doing is way too much. We're we're going overboard. Um, but if we have one major problem develop, we would be criticized for not doing enough. Right. So, so for us, um, when, when we take the oath uh, to serve, part of that oath is that we are um, looking out for um, the betterment of our population, the safety and their 
and that, that's what we're trying to do. Over at the senior center, and, and specifically, the, um, we, are, we are tremendously concerned um, that we don't, uh, while we're practicing social, uh, 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 social distancing, that we don't want to isolate our seniors. So what, what we have instructed the uh, uh, director and her staff is they are making um, telephone calls to the seniors that are on their, their roster. They made 60 telephone calls. Of course, last when I talked to uh, Christina this afternoon, she has made 60, she made, has made her and um, Sue have made approximately 60 telephone calls. Um, they will continue that. Um, we're, we've talked to LifePath. LifePath will be um, doing meals that we can, the seniors that need will be able to pick them up at, at the facility. Um, in addition, Darius uh, Modesto, the superintendent of schools, has also offered that if there's a need, he will um, help provide um, meals from the cafeteria of the regional school as well. Um, so right now, uh, although the senior center is closed, we've, we're trying to still provide as many of the services as, as we can. Um, and, and we've even talked to the uh, director of the uh, South County EMS to make wellness checks um, if we if extended out for a long time. Wellness checks as in not going in and, and doing that, but rolling up to the door um, and talking through the door to make sure um, that we have contact. So we're, we're, tr we're trying. Um, we're, and hopefully we will discuss that we have also a very con serious concern for the safety of our staff, but also understand that this time of year like most time of the year, maybe there's one weekend during the year where we don't have a lot of work to do, um, but they have a, a tremendous amount of work to get done right now. So we're, we're going to talk about that shortly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dave, I have anything? Uh, just, uh, you know, I think one thing is uh, be careful that there's a lot of, uh, for, despite the temptation, do not use social media for news sources. Go to reliable, reputable news sources like we, the government websites we mentioned. And uh, also be aware there's a large ramping up, um, we've had to deal with in our office too, of people taking advantage of the situation and like phishing scams and things have really stepped up hmm. and they're trying to like, t you know, send it out related to like virus related things and everything like that. So just only get your information from reliable sources because there's a lot of incorrect information out there and a lot of people are taking advantage of it, trying to, you know, sell things Sense. and stuff like that, so. <clears throat> Chief, you wanna weigh in with anything? So far, you <clears throat> hit the nail on the head. Um, we still have emergency services available, police, fire, and ambulance, yep. even if all this stuff happens and, and, and whatnot, you still are, are out there. Give us a call if you see anything, if you need anything, and uh, um, you know, hopefully we'll just keep you, take care of each other, but start with yourself first and always, uh, always stay safe. Nice. Coordinator? Nothing. Okay. So uh, I asked, Jeff was asked later last, late last week and then worked on it over the course of today about an emergency declaration. Um, you know, we have the ability in an emergency declaration to expend funds to, you know, ex extend, extend powers, close things down, postpone tasks, you know, limit group sizes, those kinds of things within, within the power of the Board of Selectmen. And the draft is in front of us, but before we get to the draft itself, I'd like to ask about the, the board's prerogative with respect to actually calling. This is using the, fra this is using the framework uh, that uh, comes from uh, composites. Uh, some of his language from uh, the state level, some of it's from our neighbors, some of it Jeff ad-libbed. No, I, I kid, it's all good. Um, and we can go through some of these whereases because that's what a declaration is, is a whole bunch of whereases. Um, the question I have from, for the board, for the body is, have we seen enough information in and around us to go through this declaration knowing 
that we've closed schools, right? The superintendents and the governors closed schools, yep. closed library. We have limited access to our public spaces, right? Outside of barring the public from coming in those spaces, those steps, it's, it's one of the few steps remaining inside of the declaration that were actually allowed. Now, business will still be conducted, just like the chief has said and the coordinator has said. Um, well, wouldn't say, but it's coordinating. Um, and we know that it's it's this time of year where people get out more. They want to. They want to. You know, we're almost. It wasn't. A, it was a winter that was not. But anyway, people still want to get outside and do things and interact. The question I have for the for the the board is: if we go about this process. Uh, we can always lift the declaration. It's pretty easy to do. Um, this is in our only governmental task, day-to-day -day governmental task that interacts with the public at this point on a regular basis is going to be this building outside of EMS. And, 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 and Scott, Scott and I lived through the, uh, the roof falling down of the elementary school. And at that time, the first, one of the first items that we did was we de declared a uh, state of emergency. Now, we, we declare states of emergency on, under big snowstorms and rainstorms and, and such. Um, but what, what the state of emergency did when our roof collapsed, it allowed us basically to rebuild, a build, rebuild completely a building in nine months that everybody in the, in, in the construction industry said that was impossible to do. But we 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 were able to we were able to work with the inspector general's office. We we were able to work with the the uh, attorney general's office. We worked with, with uh, small school assistance building, our state legislators, and we were able to we were able to do things. We we the town the little dinky town of Sunderland was the first basically the first town to use design build in the state in the state of Massachusetts because of because of our de declaration of emergency. My biggest problem not doing a dip, dip, uh, um, uh, declaration of emergency would be that if we run into the expenditure of funds, specifically, um, <coughs> I was talking to Carolyn Ness, who, who mm -hmm. is basically the chairperson of the Mohawk Health, uh, Health Group, and we believe from what, what she's being told, that at some point we're going to be able to offer drive-through testing for, for the virus. We hope. That costs money. Right, right now, they have $1,200, Deerfield has $1,200 in their, in their line item. I don't think we have 50 cents in ours. Right. So if, if, we were a, if, if we wanted to do something like that if, and, and participate, which I'm sure we would, we, we would need emergency funds to do that. The, a declaration of in, the emergency would allow us to, to have some, some resource for funding. And, and also, um, the senior center, if, we, if, if we're trying to get meals out, not only to the, the regular, but if, if it's an extended period and we go into a lockdown where there is no public transportation, we may have to look at ways to get. We may have to look at ways to 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 get um, resources to some of our our residents that can't. So I would think that we we would strongly consider doing a uh, an emergency declaration, Mr. Chair, and and just because of what it it offers, it gives us the ability to do if if we need to make quick quick actions. David. Yeah, based on everything that's going on, I think it's the prudent thing to do. And, and like we're saying, we can always lift it. Sure. So to uh, each each of the members' points, there are it's two pages of declaration, right? There's a history. There's a history component. It, it spells out the highly contagious, potentially fatal respiratory disease, the WHO's designation, the governor's designation, the president's designation, the steps that the uh, governor took on a particular date, the fifteenth. And then uh, the real meat on the frame here is uh, we determine that the immediate public action is needed in order to prevent or minimize the spread of COVID-19. And among the people of Sunderland, 
and this is where the whereas has come in, whereas it's critical to take additional steps to prepare for, respond to, and mitigate the spread of COVID-19 to protect the health and welfare of the people of Sunderland and whereas declaring a state of emergency will facilitate and expedite the use of resources to protect persons from the impacts of COVID-19, including but not limited to emergency expenditures pursuant to mass general law, limitations of operating hours and access to public buildings continues. There's another whereas the community is exhausted and can be expected to exhaust local resources, mutual aid assistance and cannot handle the emergency without state federal assistance. So in the final sentence is, you know, the board recommending it. You remember declarations of emergency can be lifted with a simple meeting. They end. So there's nothing else in here about the wheels of government turning any differently. It's about an arm's length relationship with the public that the public has to have with itself right now. So that's the that's the, the framework. I don't think I'd add any I don't think I'd add any language differently. Coordinator the EMD said that the language seems good. The chief sent in language that was good. Anything else? No, most of this was recommended yep. by the town council. council. Okay. Um, and then the last whereas clause was... I love the last whereas. Required by our policy. Yeah, we actually have to, right? Yep. It's good to have one of those. Okay, any other discussion? Any public comment? No? Not hearing any? Is there a mm -hmm. motion to... Uh, declare, motion. declare a state of emergency? Second. Motion is made and seconded. This is a declaration in response to COVID-19. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, the town of Sunderland is in a state of emergency. Jeff has talking points he worked on with the, both the Board of Health, the EMD, the Chief, and those talking points are, are here in draft form. Yes. And you want to give us the cliff notes on that? Yes, um, well, these are actually to consider whether or yep. not to close the public buildings. Yep. Um, and to the public. To the public. Yep. Maintain services. Uh, key to point out that, as we discussed, um, police, fire, mm -hmm. ambulance, emergency services still available. Mm -hmm. Call 911 if it's an emergency. Um, as we mentioned, as of in 50 minutes ago, right. the library was closed. Um, the Governor Baker closed the schools for three weeks. Mm -hmm. We would still be able to do business in town. Um, employees would still be expected to come in unless they're exhibiting symptoms. Some of the ways that business could be done, um, tax payments, yep. still want the money. Right. Yeah. We have a drop box. You can do mail. You can do it online. Uh, if you have applications, we have an online permitting yep. system. Um, telephone, email, all still available. Um, we ask that if there's a particular situation where you feel you need to come in, give us a call, give us an email. If it does appear that there needs to be one-on-one -on -one interactions, we can schedule a time, make sure there's a clean space, social distancing, um, and then protocols for holding public meetings, um, trying to do those remotely. Mm -hmm. One of the things I did today was um, do a free conference call that can have up to a thousand people. So if you're having a really big meeting Sounds and it has productive. a web interface so that you can mute everybody who's not talking and then open it up to questions and answers and that would be, I'd make that available um, to staff for their own meetings so that they could, wouldn't just be yep. for us, but for everybody assuming there's no conflicts. Um, so, so Jeff, could could we Zoom. could we set yeah, exactly. could we set up the board with uh, Zoom and allow uh, res and and call a meeting for six thirty mm -hmm. and then then publicize the the meeting yeah. so that anybody that wants to can dial can, right can can dial it they can go on Zoom and which is a free it's a free app mm -hmm. and you can get Zoom yep um, and you can join in and you listen and as well as probably FCAT could probably film off from Zoom as well. They they could probably they'd have to do some some thought process, but I think we could probably do that. 
I'm not familiar with Zoom, but it sounds like the board is. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. if that's the preference, yeah. I'm uh, happy to long. look into it. It sounds like it is. A, uh, Unf thing unfortunately, be I've been, been very. I'll have to <laughs> ask Chris. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll talk to him first, and we'll get back to you to see if that's possible. But I, I, I would, and again, for, for us, it's, 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 try, it's trying to set an example uh, to me. It, it's trying to set an example of what, what we should try to be doing. Sure. Um, and and I, I'm thankful that we have that people that came out tonight, but I, I understand there is a concern, there, there, are, there is concerns that we have, and that we have to, and we should address those concerns. Sure. And, 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 or if there's something else besides Zoom, I, I'm familiar with Zoom, so yep. um, it, it's an easy way um, for us to have a meeting. And we can also, it can be taped at the, I mean, and again, un, unfortunately, and I, I hate to say it, but according to the open meeting law, people have a right to come to a meeting. They have a right to be there and listen. They, they by law, they don't necessarily have a right to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, which has always been off, I've never understood. So we could technically have a meeting as long as that people are able to hear. I'd rather have people come, you know, be able to participate, mm -hmm. and I think they could with Zoom. That's been our style for some time. I mean, even though you carry a placeholder for public comment, it's never been the board's prerogative to say, okay, now there's the one time in the meeting where the public can speak. We'd much rather have that interaction. <coughs> Besides, it's more fun. Right? When all said yeah, and you, done. you could say that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it's those kinds of meetings, too. Catherine? I just want to say if the, the town is able to pr get Zoom or some kind of software that mm -hmm. it's just done as soon as possible and shared with all the other departments yep. and, um, and boards and committees in town, because we're all looking for ways to meet right now. and. Um, you know, I was looking into getting Zoom for the library, but if there's a town system, it, it's, I mean, the free version just isn't going to cut it for what right. we need to do. So it'd be really nice if that could be okay. done as soon as possible and shared. So in, include scale, right? Yes. That makes it important. The free cuts you off at 40 minutes and yep. the trustees meetings go a lot longer than 40 Sure. Minutes. Or there's an opportunity to streamline the meetings. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Wait, you have to look at it the other way, like, like Scott was saying, well, you can cut your meeting down. Right. It, Zoom is um, also people can call in. It's not just on the computer. Right. You don't. You don't call. You don't call any. Well, you 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 drop into the meetings. Right. So with it, when you have the when you have the program, the Zoom program, what what you do is on your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you can put the app on, you can join. You can be there in the meeting, and you can get recognized. You can send messages. Uh, on the chat, so you can actually, uh, you could actually talk to us that way. Yeah, it's so, like WebEx or any of those call, other. You can't call in through a, through a normal phone. Like, there is also another There is, okay, because yeah. I just no. wanted to make sure it was technology. People who didn't yes. have a smartphone or a computer would be yeah. able to participate. That's why I, I initially went to conference calls, yeah. but yeah. as long as that's service. Sense. And, 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 I mean, you could do Zoom. But you can also do conference call. We could, we could we could do we could do a conference call. I mean, we could could be on Zoom and you could have conference calls if somebody wanted to join, join in the the wheel in on a speakerphone or something. Right, right. So so we, we there's more than one way to do it. Yeah. Okay. But I, I I would I would think that we should look at you know our next meeting trying to do the dry run well, we should do the dry run say, do the dry run before exactly. the meeting <laughs> yep do a rehearsal of it mm -hmm. test up the just in case right okay so we'll we'll uh, work on that during the course of this week and so find electronic should. methods to conduct town business because i suspect there's going to be a lot of strain on um sure. bandwidth and everything because everybody's trying to get on there so that would be an interesting be good, challenge yeah so as of uh today with the emergency declaration right is the board going to take the steps to follow the recommendations that Jeff has drafted, including closing the public buildings to the public? I think it. Right, we do, we made a declaration. It gives us a lot of authority. Now there's steps you know, inside there. You, you, you know, you know, Scott. One, one of the things, and 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 I don't know how the library came came about their decision, um, but I, I I'm sure it was through a lot of soul soul right. soul searching. Um, I have talked to uh, a few members of our staff, and they'd rather not close because they say they're busy. 
And he says, well, because we're closed to the building doesn't mean that you don't have to come in. No, close it, to the public. It, just right. the public it's close access. to the public. Right. And while we have, so while we have signs, mm -hmm. and, and it was a very interesting conversation I had, and they said, well, if someone's sick, they're not going to come in. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Well, and especially based on the safety of this. Think? I mean, you, if you're drunk, you're not going to get behind the car, uh, wheel of a car and drive either, would you? <laughs> sometimes people make, some, sometimes people make poor mistakes, right. or, or they may not know. So, Aaron? I just want to emphasize, because of the nature of this illness, you can carry the virus without mm -hmm. any symptoms whatsoever. Exactly. So, double precaution. Need to be that's that's one of the troublesome Aaron, things about it. Is and, 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 and I, I would, I'd like to add to what, what the chair has already said. Um, in, in today's society, with the social media and you have phones, you have internet, um, there, there are many different ways of contact. They will still be here for their hours. You can still telephone call. Right, you can call and if you, and if, you, if you need a copy of a birth certificate, the town clerk can still get that copy and, 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 and put an envelope and, and hand it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that can still be done. Right. And, and that doesn't mean we're stopped. If you have, if you have bills to be paid, you know, you can still, you know, there's a, we have a drop box out in front. We have, and, and that's been used for years and years and years mm -hmm. that the, the tax collector treasurer checks every, every single day. So it's just, so the steps are in place to so keeping people out of the building. That's pretty straightforward. Some, some people, some people like, to, some people like to pick up a receipt when they pay their taxes, they like a receipt that may not, that's going to, we may have to, that's going to have to be gone for right now. Right. That being yeah. said, um, we can, of, we, can still send, we can right. we can we can send you a receipt right. if you have a request that you want a receipt sent to you we can still send you a receipt yeah. so so mr chair i would i would highly recommend that we close a building to public yep. David? Agree. yeah okay is it in the form of a motion oh, I, Jeff's gonna. Jeff. I just wanted to no know really that. you can you can keep coming to work <laughs> <laughs> Previously, to, um, to making the recommendation, I did speak with the chair of the Board of Health and the public health nurse, and both thought that it would be a good idea. Again, not because we have any presumptive or confirmed cases in the area, but we're doing our part to ease the pressure on the health care system so that those most in need, should they get it, um, have perfect. access. So well, I think the important thing, that's the important thing, is we're trying to prevent getting cases. And right. That, that, that's the whole thing. It's, it's less than that curve. So, be out front. Yep. Okay, so that'll be effective tomorrow morning, right? Yes. Okay. Is this tomorrow? Um, form of a motion. motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded to close the public buildings to the public. It sounds so ironic, but <laughs> as of uh, as of the opening of day tomorrow, then uh, that's the way we'll be operating. So again, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Right. Three to zero, please. So. Uh, the, you can continue to contact the offices, whether it's police or fire or town or maybe not so much a library. You're not going to get books out. Be, yes, yeah. you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we're closed, yep. the building is closed, um, library staff are still be working on site. Um, cool. We will still be offering um, a lot of services including um, curbside pickup. So if you nice. wish to request an item that we own here in Sunderland, we're happy to bring it out to your car. Nice. Um, so you don't have to come in the building. We're also doing home delivery. Um, this is a service we provide normally anyway to people who are homebound, but that's everyone these days. Yep. So we're happy to, to bring you books as well, as long as you contact us. And just let us know what you like. Um, our wireless internet is still available in the parking lot. Um, and in the library's backyard, you can access it from under the elm tree if you like. So it's nice. a really nice way to enjoy nature. Um, also, we have digital collections that are available 24-7. That includes e-books, audio books, um, streaming videos, research databases, digital magazines. So just about anything you could want from the library, you can also get online without having to come in the building. Um, so we're just encouraging our patrons to call us. Um, we will be there if you need anything or send us an email. Um, so we're, we're still here to help even though the building is closed. Aaron? I also want to underscore, and this is largely due to Catherine's excellent direction, that we are going out of our way to sanitize every single library item that goes out of here and comes in to the library. We are quarantining all returned books for three days, which is the amount of time that the virus can move on our services. And then after that, we're taking double measure to treat every surface, every disk, every item with an isopropyl 
alcohol solution to make sure that they're as clean as possible before they go out to patrons. Nice. Two good pieces of news right there. Yes. Go ahead. We make an exception maybe to the public closure of the grammar school. Aren't we having lunches served out of there for kids? Uh, programs is something I'd have to do some homework on. Okay. I know that the superintendent's got that those buildings close to normal programming, so we would follow his guidance as to what whatever that is. But it's a good point. And uh, well done, uh, library and staff. That's a that's a pretty whiz bang. Most other towns are not providing any library services at all. Sunderland, I think, is a model for stepping up to the plate in the time of crisis. So when the line of cars is all the way down School Street. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we've had some of our busiest days this week, you know, when all the other libraries around us were closing. Yep. We, I mean, our, our shelves are empty right yep. now. I mean, it's kind of frightening. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's <laughs> stocking yeah. up for, their, yeah, people have been for the quarantine period. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. Oh, we got plenty of toilet paper, so don't worry. <laughs> don't say that. Yeah, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm seeing for clothes. I mean, we've got 96 rolls of toilet paper sitting in the closet, so if anyone needs it. Perfect. Um, DoorDash for books now, yeah. huh? Nice. There you nice. go. Okay, so I appreciate the discussion as well as the extra steps. Uh, E&D, we're going to figure out from the school what programs are available and we won't be impacting any programs that the, that the administration is running. But to the sporting events, to all the other stuff that other people, you know, go in and out of the school for, right. done. Okay. And does the school include the grounds and the playgrounds? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Because they're pretty apt to be loaded with germs. Hmm. Yep. We'll follow up with that. Right now it's the building. What are people going to walk their dogs? I Sorry. mean, come on. They'll all be down at the cemetery. <laughs> right they are today. Okay. Uh, so that said, any other discussion about emergency declaration and then your uh, draft? I appreciate that. Situa situational awareness report. And I think that if we can get that up on the website, that'll be great. Again, links, warning levels, and uh, practices. So that's a good thing right there. Anything else with respect to declaration of emergency since we jumped right down to the bottom of the agenda? No? Okay. So uh, with respect to... Um, Select board budget presentation. Let's postpone that. That would be just our section of the budget. It's a whole bunch of zeros. Like all of them are zeros. It's pretty easy this year. Uh, and the other piece about the selectman's budget presentation is we try to have inside that space our uh, first pass revenue forecasts, and we still haven't received those from this our certification from the state yet. So a big important piece is missing at the same time. Uh, select board updates. Not that we haven't done much this last year. <laughs> yeah. I'm all set. Thank you, Scott. Uh, well, one thing. Uh, I did mention earlier about the uh, drive-through testing that may, may occur. Um, if anyone, um, we, we have run the, those in the past where we have um, flu shots. We, pra we practice it. We also yep. had them inside. If anybody would like to uh, volunteer, um, can you please... Uh, send an email either to the selectman's office or the town clerk will we'll start taking names of people that may that be interested in helping. Yeah. I've already I already got four or five people that that have offered to help so that we wouldn't need people to help with that. Great. Town administrator updates been quiet? Very quiet. Good job. No, I think the only thing that I wanted to mention it's not necessarily related to the state of emergency but one of the other things that the governor did is say that uh, restaurants and bars could not serve to sit down patrons um, so just for all those in TV land uh, wanted to make sure that they were aware of that you're still available for a curbside pickup um, you know I think one of the things we've been hearing is that businesses are gonna get hit really hard by this and and so I just wanted to mention that one of the things you can do to help the businesses without necessarily going in is purchasing gift cards um, you know help helping local businesses during this time people don't often think of them but um, something you can do now to help them through this time that that, that benefits them and can benefit you in the future um, 
and you can still get takeaway. So exactly, you can yeah. still yeah. get takeaway as long as they're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will be posting obviously the state of emergency declaration, the closing of public buildings. We'll do code red, post on the doors, um, and on the website, and as many get the word out as much as possible. Brilliant. So homework for us. Go ahead, Tom. No, nope. nope. homework for us. We have a draft warrant in front of us, and uh, we can take this home, read it, and call in next week and, and make comments on it. We have a draft expense budget. Again, the last pieces were the um, select board um, areas, and I asked Jeff to populate, and we worked together to populate uh, with level funding based on prior years. So there's a whole bunch of level funding in there under the select board's. Uh, guys, we did get the debt schedules from the treasurer collector, so the expense budget now is is fully populated. So now we have a, a basis on the expense side. We again are missing our our uh, draft revenues right now, and uh, that'll be our homework. Any other public comment? Chief's got a new car. Chief's uh, did the fire truck beat the cruiser? I need the <coughs> fire truck beat the cruiser, but yes, uh, <laughs> only upon delivery. <laughs> Uh -huh. The cruiser was already registered and ready for insurance. Got so it. We picked it up. There's a phase two that we have to get the other one set up. To, yeah, yeah. So it's, nice. it's all good. It was, it was <laughs> to think, you know, it takes that long to create those vehicles. And, and again, it takes that long to create those vehicles. I, I totally understand that. That was, of course, last year's annual town meeting. Yep. Yeah. To think how long it took to get a fire truck. Right. They build houses faster. They do. <laughs> it's, nice. I, 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 it's a beautiful truck, but when you think about how long it took to get, well, it's like, yeah. 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 Well, that's it. God. There's, a, there's, a, there's, there's one whole co tool compartment just with the bid binders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing. Okay, any other discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Oops, sorry, Catherine. One, one little yeah. question, I'm sorry. Um, so I just want to... Um, put this on your mind that we, you know, there's a lot of part-time employees in this town who maybe not have a ton of sick time available to them, and I'm just hoping that there's a way for us to to allow them to go into the employee sick bank to, to use that sick time. So. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, not not just in the public sector. The private sector is getting clobbered. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. No other discussion. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Is there a second? Sorry. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero, please call us out at seven.